is Diana and I will be your host today on our one hour live stream. So I want to welcome you to our uh, live stream on this channel and our our channel is the world's first of its kind channel providing free 100% live streaming seven days a week with honest beautiful Ukrainian women. So um, uh, on our channel, you will finally have the opportunity to video chat uh, seven days a week with different beautiful Ukrainian girls to ask all your questions about Ukraine, Ukraine culture, current events in Ukraine. And here's you might just discover what makes us mysterious Ukrainian women tick. <laughs> so please write in comments. Um, uh here where are you from what is your name and um while i wait for your questions hello hello guys um let's uh, take a quick look um at our live streaming ladies that you can talk to live every day <laughs> so please uh, meet our new beautiful lady today uh, Julian, also please watch our pr previous live stream with our beautiful Anya, Yelena, and of course Jana. Um, and today our main topic is our beautiful Ukrainian lady Julia. So please meet Julia. <laughs> everyone yes guys before we will get started i just wanted to remind you please to subscribe on our channel like this video and you will want not to miss our next live stream so please hit the bell icon not to miss our future streams um welcome julia ask julia your questions and uh, yes be active please in chat and also wanted to remind you that there is no taboo questions for us girls so you're welcome to ask anything hello julia julia how hello. are you today <laughs> hello diana oh my i am good today and this is first live stream for me in common so i'm a bit nervous but i'm um. gonna be fine <laughs> 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 yes, I understand you. I was the same nervous on my first live stream, so I understand how you feel now. Guys, please support Julia today. It's her first live. So, yes, please, Julia, tell us a, bit, uh, a little bit about where are you living now and how is it there? Yes, yeah, so recently I'm living in Essex, in the United Kingdom, and in Bentley City here. So I'm first time in United Kingdom and this has been just a big surprise for me as United Kingdom, very friendly and uh, people, mentality so suits to Ukrainian people. So I'm really in a good shock after, especially after all what's going on in my life. I'm very happy to be here and I'm appreciate and thankful for this period of my life in UK and yeah so I'm feeling good here and I like in UK in Essex wow that's great I'm happy for you and what about your family where are they now during the war are they safe so during the war my family just 
in Ukraine, and unfortunately, men not allowed to go outside, so my father stay in whole war in Ukraine. But my mom had a chance to evacuate from my city, and unfortunately, my city kind of destroyed now because I used to live near borders in north of Ukraine. I'm from Chernigiv city, and uh, my mom evacuated, and recently she's in Poland. Oh wow. Well, so your dad is in military? Is he fighting? Or... Uh, he not in military. He just now in our home, and he is um, retired. It's why he not in military. But unfortunately, um, I know that my uncle now on a war. My brother, not my brother, cousin, but we are very close. Wow. Uh, so my cousin, he's. Uh, younger than me he's on a war and yeah situation like this and how old is your cousin uh, he is 22. wow yeah you know i also have friends in ukraine which are also in military and one my friend is 21 another is 22 and i feel so proud for our guys that they are fighting even though they are so young i'm so yeah. proud of this really yeah and, and he used here's... to used to work in national guardia so it's why like first wow, days it's... of war yeah he directly started to wow. help and fight for ukraine so he's and professional he's... this is his okay. professional and now even his father joined this war as i said my uncle he also on the war wow well i hope that they will be in safe and i hope that I understand how how worried are you because I'm the same worried every day about my friends and yeah it's it's family it's even closer than friends so yeah I'm just yeah. hope that they will be in safe and here is our first question from Chris how has the war affected on you mm -hmm. So, in common, I see that even my life philosophy change if we start from this topic because I used to plan many things. I have my life back in Ukraine, I had my job, my friends, my family, my flat, my home. My parents building a home now, was building a home and now everything stopped and your life just changed in one day and it's not depends on you it's made me first of all anxiety but now i trying to see positive um, sides of this and what i'm trying to focus it's every day like a new life so i appreciate every day now much more and not making that far plans and really i'm trying to enjoy more day here and now and this gives me even more happy um, happiness in my during life so i kind of love this philosophy now but um i don't like the price for this in my life mm -hmm. so yeah it's affected me a lot and first of all i've been very stressed i've been worried i've been reading all news and wanted to understand what's going on and when this everything gonna stop and when i see that i'm already i cannot i'm too stressed about this and i'm very empathetic person and i'm feeling everything very deeply so i decided to uh, do something with my life and focus on my life on things which i can control because when i'm watching things which i cannot control it's not giving me any uh, good uh, any good uh, positive side so i decided just to okay stop and mm -hmm. uh, think about myself my life and things which i can control things how i can help my country and how can i help my family and this is my main thing for now yeah you know i heard heard a lot of uh, things like this from ukrainians that now they enjoy every moment after this situation it was a big lesson for all of us that we should more enjoy yeah every day and our even usual life because it is still positive moments when you're in safe everything is good and your relatives are together and uh, thank you chris for asking to chris saying thank, thank you. you for the honest answer yeah thank you guys so um so um 
our next question don't even have a spot to ask mine but i enjoy i appreciate this guys thank you uh, do you meet any other ukrainian in ss now and do the local community organize any activities for ukrainian to adapt with the uk culture yeah so very nice question and uh I, as I said, I'm very happy to be here and I see that mental and people suits to Ukrainian people a lot. First place when I came to Essex is when just this program started for Ukrainian people. And I see that uh, in my region where I'm living, I'm living in Benfield, and near we have a ready, like a ready city. And this ready city, they actually organized big community and all the Ukrainians which come to UK by this program or any uh, English people who want to support and help Ukrainians, they can come every Tuesday. We have, we still having these oh. meetings and uh, we are like a big uh, organization, big community meeting each other every Tuesday. And uh, this was so nice at the start for me in this country because this is really supports you. You can find many uh, people, many new friends from same country as you. You know their situation. You sharing each other your experience and some things which, for example, I came a bit later than other Ukrainians. This program started like uh, in a end of the April, start of May, and I came maybe after only three weeks after this program started. And already some Ukrainians experienced things here, which for me, everything new. And I didn't, I didn't yeah. know where should I start? What should I do? So this has so, been so useful, so supporting. And I appreciated this a lot. And still we're going to these meetings and what's on this meeting, uh, English people come and they're really helping us and we have a very nice and friendly man, Mike. He owned the restaurant here in Essex and he cooking food for us for <gasps> our every meeting. Wow. Yeah. And also we have a lady, she's like um, organizing and can help you with any information you need. She's from Ukraine. Her name is also Yulia, Julia. Wow. And she's been living in Essex in UK for a while. She's not uh, here due to war. She's been living, she knows she faced all these things. And she actually, uh, I can say like my mother uh, here to me, wow. advising me things, helping, and not only for me, for everyone. So yeah, yeah, it's very big community and it's so nice. I'm very happy about. Wow, that's so great. I miss Ukrainian food so much here. And I wish to, to find somebody who will who will be able to cook for me something Ukrainian. But for now, I need to cook by myself. <laughs> so that's great. That's great because your um your food, I mean your national food is the one of the yeah, biggest things that you miss so much when you are yeah. out yeah. of the country. So, yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, I'm happy for you, Julia. Hello from Michigan. Hello, Hans. Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Good evening, Gregory. <laughs> so, Good evening. Uh, my next question for you, Julia, is where did you grow up and how was life growing up for you? Uh, so, as I said, I'm from Chernigiv city and I've been growing up in the city. So, all my childhood I spent in Chernigiv and I've been a very happy child. I really love my city. I love people there. And north of Ukraine, we speak Russian everyday life, mostly. And my city just near borders uh, Russia and Belarus. Oh. And in the down below we have in Kiev as capital so for me to capital it's two hours by car and uh, i've been a very happy child i really like my area i have my uh, grandparents i've been visiting them in villages summertime and but we've been going to the camps as a child so actually it was my very happy uh, time and I like my wow. That's great. I have some friends from Chernigiv and I know that uh, 
Um, Chernigiv is one of the cities in Ukraine, which is pretty rare, where there is very clean water. Water. The water is very clean. And I, my friends told me, Yule, if it's true that you can drink um, water, um, um, I mean, you don't need to buy the water in the um, in the store. You can just drink it. I mean. Uh, how to say that uh, from your home from a tap um, yeah yeah you can is drink from a tap and actually my family they um, now built in a house and they have something like a, a whole very very huge hole in a ground and they take in this water from wow. downstairs and their water so clean like from from special filtered water so and in my flat i used to have very nice quality water so actually yes and my experience we have very nice and clean water very nice clean city and our city like very ancient we call it ancient chernigiv because we have a huge history and um, we have a lot of churches we have uh, like some renovations recently and new parks so we have like an ancient area modern area very nice wow. city i really love my city i unfortunately did not had a chance to go to chernigiv but before the war started started i was planning to go to visit my friends so unfortunately but i i unfortunately did not have this opportunity but i hope in future i will have it and julia are you planning to come uh, back to ukraine for sure, I'm planning to come back to Ukraine, but when situation gonna be better, because my city just near border, and unfortunately, my flat was bombed. Oh and, my God, really? Yeah, yeah and um, as a place to come back, I have a family house, but they still having a renovation here, they built in this house. So for sure, I will go back to Ukraine. I don't know if I will stay and live directly or I will come back to UK. But near time when I can, uh, when I can and I had a chance, I will go, I will meet my family, be, will meet my friends. And when I see the city, when I also vi visit capital, Kyiv, uh, because I see many photos, many videos, my friends sending me, I'm very shocked, like on, main street in um, Kyiv, they have in, like tanks everywhere. Yes, oh, yes. Oh, like, big exposition, exhibition, and I've been very surprised, and I want to see this everything. But can you please tell us a little bit about your flight, so what happened? It was like directly bombed, or was it like, I don't know, like the part of a bomb, or, or what happened with your apartment? Um, in Chernigiv, in heart of Chernigiv center, I have a studio apartment, which I have been given rent recently. And uh, I've uh, already been outside because war already been like five days or six days. And uh, in the middle of the night, uh, rental people writing to me that we have a fire in our building and uh, we are running away. Unfortunately, we cannot stay. We cannot like watch. Um, Right, uh, apartment. I said, of course, uh, just run away. And uh, she sent me just some photos, and I cannot even see clearly what's going on. But I see that all my terrace, all my windows, they just fall down mm -hmm. and cracks in the wall. And uh, like, and I see that she also made a picture of uh, all building from. Um, outside and this building on fire and okay. then i see him just after maybe one hour in the news like in in a central area in building first rocket which been going from russia or belarus even uh, it came just down in my building and oh my, uh, my flat it's like in the middle of building and rocket came to just edge, so to the corner, and then it's bombed. 
first building in very bad situation and some apartments are just burned and all other apartments all building it's an emergency statement because of a wall and building settling down and mm -hmm. yeah people no one can live here and i've been very surprised i cannot expect this but this is not what i'm speaking now this emotionally and i reminding this everything in my head maybe i seem sad but it's not what made me so sad in common i'm not thinking even about this recently i just reminded mm -hmm. this yeah this is not good but yeah. i mean were there any people i mean did people in the, from the first building which you say that is destroyed are they alive or i mean i know i know that some people been insured and if they survived i don't really know because no one in this area i can't connect and this rental oh. people they cannot live here so this building in emergency statement oh my god dash is saying sorry for what happened thank you dash thank you uh here was the question from bill which i'm sorry we missed um, uh will uh, insurance pay to repair your flat so first of all we have some kind of government app where um i seen in news also that people can apply their um like documents and uh, say about their story and maybe have some compensation i applied maybe just this program started i applied because this has been just a start of the world when this happened to my, my flat and i still didn't get any answer but as i communicate with my family my mom she's saying probably i need to go to police for this i need to be in ukraine but as an owner um. of the flat i cannot go now obviously i'm in another mm -hmm. country and i cannot go back now because of dangerous situation so when i will be back to ukraine i will need to apply this all applicants and also i read some mm, new rules recently that i need to open court case to the ukrainian uh, court to the russian court and then apply this to european court so this is what wow. i'm planning to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's it's a long process yeah it's a long process and I need to be in Ukraine for this, as I see. Okay, thank you. Here is another question from Sean. Sorry, Sean. Uh, did she leave Ukraine alone or with the family? You mean Julia. Julia, did you leave Ukraine yeah. alone or with your family? I left Ukraine alone and I've been gone uh, when this everything just started. And I've been going, I've seen this all war, all cars, military cars, and I've been so stressed about everything what's going on. I cannot even understand what's going on. But my family, they didn't want to leave Ukraine at all. My wow. mother, she just left now because she loved, lost her job. And in Ukraine now, it's hard to live especially in a country where near borders and when you just live next to russia it's very hard to stay in place like this and she decided to go with her friends all together to poland so she uh, evacuated just recently and yeah i just decided to evacuate the first days of the war because uh, you know all media have been talking about some invasion but you cannot even think like it can happen and nowadays you cannot even imagine that war can be like this and i didn't expect yes. it will be this long i expected maybe two days three days and they make some diplomacy uh, connection like uh, they decide something and no one will suffer like this and civilians won't uh, die like this every day so i'm still very shocked and this team very touchable for me because i didn't expect this at all so the truth is that russia does not keep their promises yeah so they promise that yeah. there will be no damage but they don't keep it they always promise yeah. it, but they don't keep yeah and most uh, bad for me is that they attacking civilians they attacking homes why they attack my building just like this my building just near television stay uh, big television uh, antenna something like this and kindergarten and they attacked oh my, my building 
So for me, this is just seems all like a horror dream or something. I don't know if it's in Ukraine right now, and this is no, not bad. You know, it depends on where are you located right now, Donald, because if you're in the cities which were very much attacked, they're destroyed. They're truly destroyed, as Julia says. And if you're, you know, in the cities which are mostly safe and they're not that much damaged, it's another case. So it is just the question of where are you located now. So, Julia, please tell us a little bit which countries did you, did you consider relocating um, as a refugee? And why did you choose uh, UK? Mm -hmm. This is big time. And as I'm in UK now, I never even expected to be in UK and stay and live for a while in UK. I never, never expected. Even I've been going, evacuating from Ukraine. And I decided to go to Germany because I have a friend in Germany. Wow. And what I actually uh, done, I decided I will see what's going on. And as I said, I really ex been expecting like war gonna finish in a few days and I go back home. I didn't expect that I gonna stay. So I didn't make any refugee registration in Germany. Wow. But mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, uh, as I said, I come to my friend, but I cannot stay just like this. Hello, I came. My friend, of course, helped me for the first time. And of course, said, I will support you. If you need my help, you can stay. And I decided to go uh, after by government programs, they open a refugee camp. And as a Ukrainian, I can come here and mm -hmm. stay like this. So I decided to go and stay in refugee camp. And I've been staying in this refugee camp almost two weeks. Wow. Almost, so you... I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, almost two months. So you stayed in Germany for almost two months. Firstly, yeah. with your friend after the, yeah. refu the refugee camp. Yeah. And how was living there? How it was? I mean, did you had a separate room or did you had just a room um, with many people in it? H how it was? Uh, it was very interesting experience. And this refugee camp, they just created this on my eyes. We have been in first buses which came to this very big giant hall it's been in Dusseldorf city i stayed in mm -hmm. Dusseldorf it's west of uh, germany and they opened it for us this mess halls they have in this like giant halls for some expositions for some mostly like businesses and they decided to make one of them for us and they placed like a uh, walls temporary mm -hmm. walls uh, and uh, i actually stayed in a room with 10 or 11 people this been families everyone uh, ukrainians and uh, some families like woman and her mother and a child so mostly mm -hmm. like this mostly no men's but other nationality there have been immense so from ukrainians it been women's and other nationalities also been there and this being like a men's um, so there been a lot of nationalities but about the uh, this conflict mostly ukrainians mm -hmm. yes i understand what are you talking about because i was at the similar camp but in poland but we had mm. a huge hall a huge hall i don't know um i i think there were maybe 100 people or even more without i mean separated rooms so we were all together mm. 100 people sleeping there in one big hall so it was also an interesting experience and we also met there you know what surprised me also that mostly there were uh, not even ukrainian in that camp there were mostly some other nationalities like Gypsy, gyp, gypsy, gypsy, I don't know how to say correctly. Mm -hmm. So other, mm -hmm. other people, not Ukrainian. So yeah, I understand what are, what are you talking about. Mikolaev. Ah, so you're in Mikolaev. Donald, you are in Mikolaev. Mikolaev is, I know it was very damaged because I have also mm -hmm. friends in Mikolaev. They suffered a lot and 
Uh, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know. Nikolai is, was very destroyed. Maybe now I hope it's more safe in there, but Nikolai was very damaged. It's one of the most damaged cities in Ukraine, unfortunately. Okay, guys. So, uh, yes, thank you for your questions, Julia. Let's try to talk about something more positive. So, please tell us yeah. what is your biggest passion in life mm, my biggest passion in life so i think it's maybe i will be very like uh... okay i think uh, my biggest passion in life it's human connection and socializing wow. and wow. this is what recently came to my life, as I said, my life really changed and life philosophy changed a lot. And as I see, nothing more valuable for us in everyday lives and human connection and how we can one day you met one person and this can change your life and this influence you so much. Or one day you help other person with a word which helped and saved her life from this choice. And this made me recently this kind of stories and this kind of experience made me so emotional and i think this is recently for me my main passion and my main uh, philosophy that's great so um i also wanted to ask how the war changed your um, ideas and plans about your future you told us that your philosophy changed. So what were the changes? Yeah. So I've been living a very nice life in Ukraine and I had friends. I had a very nice job. I can say like my dream job. I've been working as marketing manager in a company. Yeah. It's been a very big company. I have in my city, in my Chernikiv city, manufacturing. And uh, we've been cre creative like pet stuff pet supplies wow um, wow so yeah. you like animals i love pets a lot and uh, this has been really my dream job because i've i really love marketing i've been working in marketing field for a while and this job gives me opportunity for, to work with american market with with european market and also with the uk market and uh, I've been doing social medias and I take all creative part of marketing and this made me very happy yeah. and every day on my job I've been very happy and been working with wonderful people and what uh, uh, I've been creating and bring new I bring new ideas to companies so some new uh, supplies I created and I bring it to market and I've been analyzing wow. market, uh, see what people like, what people want, and then bring in new ideas. And then this position became popular. Uh, we had a very nice um, connection with our customers. And I actually had a very nice job. And this has been like my favorite job, I don't know. Um, and uh, I've been living a very nice life so in my plans as i said being like uh, i'm working in my company very happy and uh, i've been planning uh, maybe just to uh, move into capital with the time and because we wanted to explore more big market and we uh, was wow. going to amazon and we've been uh, going to open a uh, new big manufacturing so this has been actually like my plan and things which i like to do and i think job is it's very important part of the life for me it's influenced me a lot and i'm spending i think the most attention and um, time on a job so this is very important for me and uh, when this war started, my manufacturing uh, needed to close. And even now it's closed. So I lost my job due to um, this. And um, actually, when I came to UK, uh, I found here a new job. And I've been doing this new job. 
and been starting i think everything like from zero so i'm like a, a you know like child coming to a new world and everything yes. started from zero in english uh, because also uh, here people speaking with very big accent and the uh, british language british english it's very opposite to american english and uh, I came here for this program to the host families and my host wow. family making jokes on me that I'm just like speaking American English and they wow. trying to teach me new words. So um, actually I started to like learn new language. Uh, so this host families are also find a job for me through their friends. Wow. And actually, yeah. I'm having here a very nice job and uh, yeah, I see that I'm growing every day, I'm growing, it's what I like, I like to watch myself, see that I have some mm, positive results and every day, each by each, step by step, I'm growing, I get used to, yeah. Wow, so um, if you will have the opportunity, you would prefer to work in marketing, yeah? Uh, I thought about this, and even when I came here, I very seriously speak about this with my host family, and they said competition very big here. Mm -hmm. It's not Ukraine, and also uh, connections. It's main thing. I think every job and every station in life. So if you have a connection, maybe you can go to this company even as assistants. You can start. I've been ready for this, but uh, for this. Uh, point of life I don't have such connections and I've been going and I'm working now in very big nice club for private members and uh, I actually love my job now and I stopped even to think like oh my marketing waiting for me oh <laughs> so <laughs> recently yeah recently I stopped this in my mind but before yeah of course this been my favorite job and I've been doing this for a while even I studied I had a financial degrees but mm -hmm. marketing uh, world and creative part of this it's turned me very fast and it's just clicked and i started so wow yeah i've been thinking of it but i see not now and also you need uh, excellent english for this i understand you need more big experience and such uh, case in marketing for start in a nice company even as assistant so as i had this opportunity now to work in a club which i'm working and i really and i really like it I'm using this opportunity for a while. I don't know what's going to be in future and these things I cannot know for a while. Yeah. So now, yeah, now I'm growing in the situations which love life uh, put me and I'm feeling happy about this. So for a while, for near time, I'm not thinking about this, but as an idea and as thing which really like my passion also in life, yeah, it is. <laughs> Great, great. So, Julia, please say, tell us a little bit about your host family. Um, so, how they found you, how they found them. And yeah, so, are they in this is story. Yeah, <laughs> I see already question. I'm grateful to Clinton for introducing us to you, such an amazing young lady. Um, so, I... Uh, as I said, stayed in refugee camp in Germany. And then I realized I know zero Germany. I didn't expect this war will take that long. And I speak to my many friends and some, some of my friends say like a mayor in army. And they speak to me, this situation not gonna end soon. Julia, think about your life and do what you do. Then I connected to my friends, all my girls mostly, all they out of Ukraine, some of them going to Canada, some of them in Estonia, just different parts of the world. And I, I started to ask you, how are you, what are you doing? And they already like find the jobs there, doing something or have some relatives, so they help them with the job. And I started to think, oh my God, what I'm doing? And I don't know German language. This is a big problem for me to stay in Germany. So I decided to, to um, think of the program in Canada because one of my friends, she been going to Canada and then program to UK opened. And I decided to yeah. go to UK because it's more close to Ukraine. 
Mm-hmm. And as I said, in the, in common, I really expected that this fourth not gonna take this long. And um, I decided to come to more closest country and also country which speaks English because at least I can speak some basic English yeah. and I can understand people and at least I can have some job where I can speak and connect to people, not just some cleaning or something where you just doing and that's all and having money just for survive because I'm always um, my mindset is self growing and uh, this is main thing for me. So about this I decided to choose UK and then I realized what kind of program is this. This is very different program from all our world. This program is about to find a host family uh, which they can uh, take you and open visa for you. And this is different because no one doing program like this in the world mm-hmm. for now yeah. for Ukrainians. And I think this is very nice opportunity because um, so you finding your host family and they having a uh, responsibility to host you six months and they are mm-hmm. local so they can help you with everything so they are just like a, your new family for a while in different country and they support you they help you they can help you with advice uh, with some uh, life hacks about living in this country so i decided to and think like oh this is, seems very nice program for a start and uh, self-growing i see myself self-growing in this kind of uh, country and program and uh, also english so also uh, as i know and can speak english i choose this and then i started to uh, explore like how can i go how can i find these host families and uh, what i realized that they have a separate programs like family reunion and uh, mm-hmm. just refugees him uh, sponsorship so i call it so first of all i thought i will go through family reunions because sponsorship and host families sounds for me like for sure you need to know some people and who mm-hmm. i know from uk i i don't know like some families i don't have any relatives here but i know that my friend have a friend here and uh, he actually told me about this i said like oh seems i will go to uk because this is seems a nice opportunity for a while. At least I can stay in this country, can work, can talk to people. And he said, oh, yeah, nice. I have a friend and he is in Bristol. And you can, oh. uh, yeah, and you can go. Maybe you can, uh, like, united with him. And I've been exploring with him. How can I go through this program with you? Blah, blah, blah. He's been like, of course, I will help you. And the main interesting thing in this situation, you will be shocked. Uh, he is from Russia. Oh, wow. But he is volunteering a lot. He's supporting Ukraine a lot. He don't understand situation. He's very sad. And um, he really eats why his wish to help me been so huge and he mm-hmm. said in the end when we started to apply the visa for me he said Julia I faced one problem that you need to own property here you cannot just mm-hmm. apply even he been leaving he had an official contract with a job and I know this person and I've been ready to go and no this is and it's what I like also, like, you cannot go just to someone. Yeah, government really more. watching and watching people yeah. and very responsible about everything that's going on. So I don't feel unsafe. Even yeah. at this point, I decided, mm, no problem, okay. This not going to work. I find another solution. So yeah. um, he just said that I will find the British family for you. Don't worry. This is not problem. And as I said... I will help you and I want to help you. You're a very nice person. I said, oh, thank you. And he really started to help me. And then I discovered one website, Opora. And what I see is that on this website, actually family who want to help to Ukraine, they are registering, writing about themselves and um, main things writing which they want uh, or don't want in their family. And then I started to do 
Hello. I started yes, to do it by myself. And it's how I found like three family. And I applied to them like, hello, I want to come to you. This is my story. This is my situation. If I can come, I will be very thankful. And it's how I found Clinton. And he first who answered me. And we had a video call directly. And uh, mm, we being just speak on same language, as I can say. Uh, and uh, I've been very happy and we speak about some details and what the main thing also been for me that he already been hosting another Ukrainians. So wow. couple already came to him and he done this whole process, he know what's going on and how to do this. And also main thing, he also been a refugee here some long time ago. So this way he done and for me it seems like, oh, this is just maybe perfect match. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, very nice person, so everything worked well, and uh, he opened a visa for me. Wow, this is a great story. Guys, I'm sorry, we just missed a couple of your comments, and there was a comment uh, about uh, your degree. So what is your degree, and what was the university? My university is Chernigiev National University, and uh, my degree is finance. So I studied uh, finance and credit and I finished bachelor and I have a bachelor diploma and we had some practice from university and I've been working in bank and alpha bank. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> yeah. And at this point I can say like um, my degree very nice. I can choose this way, but I see and from my childhood, I see that I am more creative person and also uh, same time, I've been doing different road. I've been doing a blogging about flat life photos. So I've been doing already like some job and I had a job, but as my university needed me to finish this and uh, for diploma, I needed to do this practice. Uh, I cannot say I don't like it. It's been fine, but this was not like my passion or something. So at this point I realized I can go back to this or I can try my own way, and it's what I actually done. Wow, and you received such a great result, so it's great. <laughs> Here were also some comments from Andrew. Andrew is also from UK, so <laughs> thank you for your comments, Andrew. Uh, what age range are you looking for? Yeah, so here's a question about dating. What age of men are you looking for? <laughs> Uh, I can say that main topic and main point for me is a person to be mature and ready for self-growth because I'm very straight to this and this is my life point. So age doesn't matter really to me. Um, I don't think it's... But there is some kind of corners like not less than 25 than my age mostly uh -huh. and uh, yeah so and not younger also, than you but yeah. can he be older and if yes how many years older yeah uh, for sure he can be older and maybe i even prefer to person and man to be more confident and more smart than me and i really feel better and good with this kind of man and uh, I've met different kind of personality, so I think it depends on person, but I don't think uh, men should be like my father age or something. This mm -hmm. is too much. So it's what is the experience. maximum? What do you think is um, the maximum age? Yeah. Maximum, it should not go through 40s. Mm -hmm. It's maybe, it's like in a corner, it's something 37, 38. It could be still kind of young and ambitious man, but already uh, explored life and more settled down because as you know, more like my age, for example, or before 30s men, they still exploring life. They want to have a lot of fun and I understand this. And uh, this is absolutely fine. But uh, when you want this in relationship, you go on through this, this person. But when you want opposite things and more serious, deep relationships, then you trying to find the man with the same vision as your. So let's remind guys that Julia is 25. So yeah, the I'm maximum 25. age gap is uh, 
13, yeah, 13 years. Help me please to count, I'm bad in math. <laughs> I think so, not less than 25, but not more than uh, 39. 40, mm -hmm. it's already like different. <laughs> Mm. Okay, great. Another comment from Andrew. Julia, I agree with you. You're referring to emotional intelligence, which is um, capacity uh, to empathize and understand Thank the you. feelings of others. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, this capacity, sometimes it influences you good, but sometimes it influences you bad. So I'm trying recently to be more not closed, but more understandable and not that much empathy, empathetic because this is my nature. I know this and uh, some ways before when I don't know my nature, but I needed to socialize. I've been suffering from this. So f for some reasons, good. For some reasons, <laughs> yeah. I'm 20, 56. I made the country law. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Yes. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> okay, Julia, so let me please ask you, have you ever dated with a foreigner? And if you did, can you tell us a little bit about this experience? Uh, I dated before with a foreigner and... Uh, Where he was so, from? <laughs> uh, interesting story. Um, I dated with Ukrainian men. And I'm still in good connection with him. We are like good friends. And after him, I haven't got any like serious relationship. And when I met this man, which I dated next, I felt really nice and uh, I really liked him. And uh, he been, um, uh, he is from Turkey and uh -huh. he, he just come back from USA. So he's very wow. flexible mind. I cannot say like he's Turkish. Uh, he is Turkish from uh, born from childhood, but he has like a more modern style of mind. Yeah, like, like more American, yeah. yeah? More American. And we wow. used to plan like to go to America, to live in America. He wanted. I've been like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to America. <laughs> Oh, wow. And would you, mm, do you think, would you marry a foreigner? And if yes, why? I think I can marry anyone who I like to. And this is not like for me some borders about nationalities or something. More important for me, it's inner qualities and mature inside and uh, same vibes and also some appearance because I think everyone has some kind of uh, things which we like and in appearance so yeah my main things it's like this okay great and um, can I ask you what is love for you love for me it's understanding and some kind of mature qualities inside and they say uh, you know some kind of comprom compromise which you're doing with love for another person so and same vibe so it's like friendship and love and everything connected together for me this is perfect match wow it's a great great answer um Juan Antonio reminding guys to like this video thank you so much Juan Antonio yes you know conversation with Yula was so interesting and so I forgot to remind you guys please like this video subscribe on our awesome channel and please hit the bell icon so you will not miss our next live stream and also I just wanted to tell you that we're having a live stream with Jana today uh, Jana goes live in two hours so be ready not don't miss it and to hit the bell i can like and subscribe thank you Hor Hon thank you thank you for reminding us okay great um uh guys before we will um finish please ask your questions uh till the end i believe julia will marry foreigner 
Yes. <laughs> we, we, I wish you anyway. Yes, to find your love. Uh, 25 years old are, and, uh, are, and already more uh, intelligent than 75% of the American women between 20 and 50 years old. Oh, such a nice compliment. Thank you. <laughs> uh, which Thank you. Um, comes first to you, family or work? Very serious question from Hans. Yeah. Which comes first? For me? Personally, I think family, but work, as I said, it's very big and important part of the life. But yes, even as I see now, this job in marketing being my favorite one, but I can easily change it. I think it depends on my inner personalities, qualities, and my personality very flexible. So if I cannot do this work, I can find another one and I will enjoy it. No. Great, great. So you see, guys, for Ukrainian ladies, family is anyway number one, doesn't matter what age is she. She wants, of course, I mean, Ukrainian ladies, of course, wants to be sure in their future, uh, but family is number one. So I understand you. Miguel says, sorry, I'm 44, too late. <laughs> sorry, Miguel. <laughs> yes, too late. <laughs> okay. What was your hardest life lesson and what did you learn from it? Mm, let me say, um, I don't think I faced my hardest life lessons yet or I'm more positive person and all life lessons I'm trying to be thankful at first and then going through and then I feel in, in a good mood to go through even hard times but i can say like my first um, relationship when my first relationship breaks it's been for me very hard and uh, when you never felt something like this you're not ready for this and you don't know how to deal with this and uh, for for now in my life this been the most hardest one but as I said, the first lesson teach you the next lessons already like you're doing very easily. So I think it's all for a good and um, I'm very thankful for all lessons which I have. Oh yeah, I totally support you. You're so positive, Julia. I, <laughs> I like it so much. Yes, you're so positive and it's very, very nice. Um, I hope Julie is enjoying her time in my country. Oh, mm -hmm. you're also from UK. Uh, how is she uh... finding, probably? Finding... Yes, sorry, guys, I have bad <laughs> problems with my eyes, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, yeah, uh, I'm finding UK very nice. As I said, for Ukrainian mentally, it's used so good. And I'm really appreciate this because in Germany, it's very different mentally. And I've been feeling like, oh, I'm going to struggle in this country if I try to put myself in and live in and stay in this country and learn new language. But um, yeah, I'm very, very thankful for UK and people are so polite, so nice and so easygoing. I really love it. And I take this quality to my life, you know, very uh, firstly and with thank thankful and grateful for this quality. This is very nice. Yes, yes. I'm thankful for all the world that they help in Ukraine and support in so much, really. It's so huge yeah. help has done from all the countries. I mean, many countries, so very, very thank you for it. Goodbye, all best of luck to Julia. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, most 30 plus years old men are already married anyway or divorced. Maybe most, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's a hard question. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Julia, um, I think that we will finish at this moment. So, guys, thank you very much for all of your uh, questions. Thank you very much, Julia, for being so positive today, for answering all of our questions, mine and guys' questions. 
so yes guys you will see yulia very soon mm, and of course it will be announced on the channel so please hit on bell icon it will help you not to miss any of our future live streams also like this video support julia with likes with comments not only here in chat but also below the video and subscribe in our channel so we will see you next time thank you so much guys thank you so <laughs> thank much you, thank you bye bye <laughs> uh, thank you guys